Confession time. I have never had a real job. <laughs> By that I mean a full-time post-grad, like adult office job. Of course I had many part-time jobs while I was a student from selling overpriced lotions and candles at the mall to being a waitress at my hometown diner. But ever since I graduated university in 2018, I dove headfirst into full-time freelance work. And in the past nearly five years, I've grown a boutique social media marketing agency called Creatorly Media. That generates more than six figures a year in revenue. I'll just be transparent with you. In 2022, that was our first year that Creatorly passed $300,000 in annual revenue, which is really exciting for me. I don't know. I know there's lots of entrepreneurs here on YouTube bragging about much higher income, but uh, I'm happy with it, so. <laughs> and of course, as always, remember that's revenue. That's not like my yearly take home income, <laughs> not even close. Okay, but it wasn't always like this. When I started down this path in 2018, I was totally solo. And in today's video, I want to tell you the story of how I went from solo freelancer to the CEO of a small agency with now 16 members. Plus answer some of the hard hitting questions that you submitted on my Instagram story. Like how I got my first clients, how I decided how much to pay my team members, and how I got comfortable with financial planning and dealing with bigger numbers. By the way, this video is sponsored by Munch, an online tool that is gonna be a total game changer if you're a social media manager or someone who's looking to grow your social media services for clients. Like seriously, the efficiency that Munch offers to the content creation process kind of blew my mind, but we'll talk more about them later. Okay, so I think I first need to tell you the story of how I got started with freelancing. And trust me, I don't wanna sound like that old grandma that tells you the same stories over and over again. So I'm gonna try to keep this super, super brief so that we can get into your questions. Okay, so all of this, Creatorly, my whole team, this business, if you follow it back down the timeline far enough, it all starts with this YouTube channel. I had a YouTube channel as a teenager. I loved making videos for it all throughout university. I kept vlogging here and my dream was to become a full-time YouTuber, but things were growing, but like really slow and steady. I dreamed of one day getting paid to make videos on my channel, obviously getting brand deals, AdSense, the whole bit, but I knew it was gonna be a long haul before I got to the point where I had a big enough audience to be able to do that. Meanwhile, because I was making YouTube videos so often, my friends and family and the people around me started to kind of know, oh yeah, Katie, she's like the YouTube girl. Like I was making videos all the time. And so it was through this persona of kind of being the YouTube girl that I actually landed my first ever freelance gig. I was in my second year of university and the music summer camp that I went to as a teenager was looking for somebody to make a promotional video. So I came in and I filmed like interviews with the campers and made like a little promo video for their Facebook page. And this is when I learned that there would be people out there who would be willing to pay me to make videos. It's just that they wouldn't necessarily be willing to pay me to make videos for my own YouTube channel, but I could make videos for their social platforms or for their website. And thus my career as a freelance videographer was born. So I kept doing that on the side through my second half of university. And I also did some like full-time internships in marketing positions. And through that experience, I really learned that I didn't really wanna work for anybody else once I graduated because um, I wasn't always the best employee, I'll be honest. I kind of used all of my free time to work on my own side projects, but I always got good performance reviews. So apparently I was doing enough for them, but I know that I was spending a lot of time thinking about my own blog and my own YouTube channel and all that stuff. Okay, so when I graduated in 2018, I was like, I'm not gonna go on the job hunt like all my peers. I am just going to double down on this freelance thing and really, really work hard on getting gigs. This is another moment where it's time for me to be transparent and just acknowledge that I was really, really lucky to have a partner who had a full-time job. So Dan got a job in the tech world immediately after graduation. So he had a steady full-time income. And if it weren't for that, I wouldn't have been able to just throw myself into freelance full-time because essentially I had no reliable income for the first like year. So anyway, I am very lucky to have that. And by the way, it's kind of because of that, that I was so motivated. Like for the first few years, my big goal was just to generate enough income that I could like match Dan's salary. And every year I've been kind of like getting close to that. But then the thing is, 
he just keeps getting raises so it's kind of hard to keep up but you know it provided me some motivation so when i went full-time freelance i was doing everything that came my way i was making real estate tour videos i was doing wedding videos i was doing like corporate training videos promo videos for facebook at one point i sent a cold pitch email to a realtor who i was like offering more like home tour videos like for her listings and she replied back to me like you know what i'm not at all interested in home tour videos but i really want to start a podcast and a youtube channel so that was kind of this perfect opportunity for me to start doing a little bit more social media content creator oriented services okay i'm gonna stop rambling for a minute and answer some of your questions from instagram rain daily asked how did you build your client base really for me it was all about networking so a lot of this did come from family and friends kind of being known as the YouTube girl. So that first like summer camp gig came through that. And then it was also through like friends and family connections that I got a few other um, video gigs for local businesses where it was like, oh, I made, I made some videos for like the company that my mom worked for or stuff like that. So I was really fortunate to have a lot of like local connections that way. But also some of it really was from cold pitch emails, like the realtor that I mentioned, like I had no connection to her personally. I just sent her an email along with like 50 other realtors that I never heard back from. And I also would go to local networking events back in the day. And one of my like main steady clients from my university days was somebody that I met at a networking event. Eventually as time went on, social media marketing became a more significant part of my client acquisition process, but we'll talk more about that in the next chapter of my story. Quarter Life Revival asked, how did you build experience before freelancing? Was it all unpaid? Yeah, so pretty much the answer is yes, it was. I had a YouTube channel where I was making videos for myself, for fun, and that's sort of how I, I had like a little bit of a portfolio as unprofessional as it was that proved that I did know how to make videos. And it was that experience that kind of led me to those first paid gigs. And I did like some volunteer work. I did do um, some content creation for some like not-for-profits as like portfolio example pieces too. HMI.Julie asked, what research did you do to set up your business and taxes? Honestly, I started with Googling and then I quickly realized that everything I was finding online was for Americans. So I was like, this is not helpful. So after that, I just started asking the people in my life. I'm like fortunate to have friends and family that are also entrepreneurs. My mom and my grandma actually both run businesses. So I was able to like talk to people and say like, okay, how do you like collect and then forward HST? Like how do you do income tax as a sole proprietor? All of that, I was able to chat with people that I knew. Abs Omstutz asked, was it difficult to make big purchases on freelancing income? I assume this is in like personal life kind of context and the answer to that would be 100% yes. And again, this is where I was super lucky to have a partner that had a, a full-time income because it meant that we weren't depending on my very fluctuating freelance income to pay the bills. So yeah, at first that would have been very, very difficult, especially if I was on my own. Yeah, I mean, even now my, my income really fluctuates, so. Okay, so I went full time with my freelancing in like July of 2018. And by the fall of 2019, I had sort of built up my business to the point where I was feeling overwhelmed and busy and that I couldn't really grow past the point where I was unless I got some help. Part of why I was as busy as I was is because I hadn't given up on this YouTube dream. So I was making like two videos per week and obviously that takes a considerable amount of time on top of all the client work that I was doing and all that YouTube work was starting to pay off because I kind of had a video go viral in the spring of 2019, which eventually led my channel to growing to past 40,000 subscribers in 2019. I'd started off the year with like 2000. So that was really big growth for me. And this is where the social media marketing part comes in. I was starting to get a lot more client requests come through via my YouTube channel. So at this point, this is where social media really surpassed all of my networking, pitches, in-person connections, pretty much all my clients at this point were coming in through the internet. This also meant that I was starting to shift my packages to be able to like be delivered completely remotely because before I was doing a lot of stuff in person. So at this point I was kind of shifting to do more like remote podcast editing, remote YouTube video editing, Instagram content creation that like didn't require me to go in person anywhere. Um, so this is where I was really shifting to being like an online first business. 
So in the fall of 2019, I hired Taylor, who's the first ever addition to the Creatorly team. In fact, it wasn't called Creatorly then. And basically I just brought her on as an assistant to like tag team all of the projects with me. At this point, we were just like splitting everything. I mean, I was still the primary contact for the clients. So like I would communicate with clients, figure out what the project was, receive the feedback, and then kind of bring that back and then me and Taylor would work on it together. Taylor is still on the Creatorly team, by the way, and now she is our YouTube specialist and she's a manager herself too. So just crazy how much stuff has grown. Okay, so let's address some of your questions from Instagram. Alexandra Ellen asks, do you have in-house staff or do you manage freelancers? So this is a great question. So everybody on the Creatorly team is a contractor and they work like varying numbers of hours per week. Everybody is a content creator, a freelancer, like people have other clients than just me. And I really love how we can balance having a team vibe and a team camaraderie while also everybody having their own solo projects that they're passionate about. And I think it also like brings a unique perspective because we work with a lot of content creators. So folks on the team know the struggle of growing a YouTube channel or growing on Instagram when we you know work with clients who are also going through the same thing. It also means everyone has the complete flexibility to choose their own hours, choose how much they work. So I found that it's a good system for us. Sammy Ventures asks, how did you decide how much to pay your contractors and amounts if you're willing to share. So I'm not gonna expose like individuals income because I think that's their business to do. But what I can tell you is I've always felt very, very strongly about paying folks on my team fairly and paying them something that like I would have been happy to make at that stage of my career. And I also base it on like industry standards. So I look up like what the average pay for like a social media manager is. With just a quick Google, you can find out that the average yearly salary for a social media manager in the US is about $70,000 a year that works out to 33 US dollars per hour and the range of income on my team is basically from around 30 ish to like 45 ish dollars an hour depending on experience and number of years they've spent on the team next I want to tell you about how I went from hiring my first part-time assistant to scaling my agency to now having a team of six but first I want to tell you about our amazing sponsor of the day Munch. Munch is this really cool online app that streamlines your process of repurposing content. As a social media manager yourself or content creator that I'm sure you're familiar with just how essential repurposing content is to being efficient with your content strategy. I think this is especially a huge asset to social media managers or agency owners because if you're working with clients who potentially have a YouTube channel, then you have the opportunity to make all kinds of content for their Instagram and their TikTok out of those YouTube videos and with Munch, you can do it super quickly. Let me show you how easy it is. All you need to do is search Get Munch on Google or use my link in the description. You can sign up for a free trial that will let you repurpose up to 50 minutes of video. Or of course you can get the subscription. And you can try Munch for yourself with my exclusive code KT22 for 30% off of your subscription. You just enter your YouTube link and then let Munch work its magic. Munch leverages AI to identify the best parts of your video to use as clips on social media. They also auto crop the original video with the most exciting parts of the footage and they make sure to do it in the correct aspect ratio for the platform where you want to post it. All you need to do is basically export and then you're ready to schedule these pieces of video wherever you want to post them. The really amazing thing about Munch is just the sheer volume of content that you can make in a short period of time. You can see here from just one video, I've been able to generate 13 clips and from this video, 20. And these are all engaging and interesting clips too. The powerful AI that Munch uses ensures that each of these clips are worth posting. This will seriously speed up your workflow when it comes to repurposing long form video content into social media content for your clients. You can check out Munch for yourself using my link in the description, or you can just go and search Get Munch to find it online. Okay, let's talk about scaling. So as client demand continued to grow, I would basically just scale up every few months or so by bringing on another creator freelancer to work on the actual client projects. And for the longest time, I kept myself in the position of the main client liaison or like manager of all the clients. But eventually that just became unmanageable because I had my hands in way too many different pots to the point where like it wasn't even that helpful like for me to be doing that. And so the account manager model emerged on the creatorly team. 
So basically what that means is all the different team members manage their own clients. So we have a few managers and then we also have some assistants on the team who don't have their own clients they connect with. They just help the team out with the content creation. And so the managers will each have like a handful or so of clients that they communicate with. They lead the project on, they become the expert in that client's brand. And then the entire team does collaborate on the content for that client so that we can draw on everybody's skill set. So if somebody's really great at video, they'll help with editing the reels for other clients, even though they're not like the manager of that client. So even as I took on that account manager model, I was still managing the managers and dealing with all of the admin, all of the client requests, fixing up any kind of issues because there's always going to be small complaints here and there that need to be addressed. And this was honestly stressing me the F out. Like I was getting really, really burnt out on this because here's the thing. In addition to running a social media agency, I was also producing two YouTube videos a week. I was posting five times a week on my own Instagram. I was scripting, recording and editing a weekly podcast. I was managing my brand deal connections and like producing sponsored content, plus answering client emails, jumping on strategy calls and dealing with like customer service issues. And I just got completely burnt out doing this. And this was a big turning point for me because it's when I realized that I was going to need to start paying people to do stuff that I didn't have clients paying me for. Right. So like all those admin logistics management tasks aren't necessarily like paid for by clients, but they're essential to make the business run and in an indirect way, right? The cost of that's built into the package price, but it just was a mindset shift for me. Okay, let's get to the questions. Christy Elizabeth 11 asked, how do you navigate going from freelance to a company that relies on a humanized brand? I think this is a really interesting question because essentially I went from being like a personal brand, just like a solo freelancer to then being a team. And eventually I branded that team so that it had its own name for the longest time. It was just like Katie Steckley Creative Services. And then it was like, you know what? I'd rather have like a brand name. So that's where Creatorly Media came from. But we're still definitely at a point, like I'll be honest with you, where most of the Creatorly clients are finding us through my own content, which makes sense. Like Creatorly has a newer online presence. So I would definitely say that one of my goals moving forward is to continue to build up Creatorly's platform. So making sure we have a, we do have a YouTube channel for Creatorly. You can follow it if you want. We have a TikTok, we have an Instagram, but continuing to build that up so that Creatorly can kind of um, acquire its own clients and it's not as tied to my personal presence. But I'm also okay with it being tied to me. Like I obviously love to promote it and love to talk about it. Um, it's just a little bit different than when it was like me personally. And yeah. Communicado asked, how did you get comfortable with finance planning and handling big numbers? This is another big mindset thing. And I think I'm still like figuring out, I mean, it's just like numbers kind of start to lose meaning to you in this weird way where like now I have, you know, like an operating balance in my bank account that I like never would have even imagined ever having that like access to that much money, right? So it's just, it's very strange. And sometimes I have to just like, I feel like I'm playing a video game or something because it doesn't seem real. But at the same time, like I do take like a very practical approach and I do just sit down and crunch the numbers and I figure out, okay, how much money does the business need on a month by month basis to operate? And yeah, like most of our operations are directly tied to the amount of client work that we have at a given time. But I also feel very strongly that I want to have enough money in the bank account that if we had one month where literally not a single one of our clients paid or paid on time or whatever, that I would still have enough money to pay out everybody for the hours that they worked. Um, I want to be able to like provide that stability. So that's the kind of stuff that I take into account um, when it comes to financial planning. So that all brings us up to speed to where I currently am with my business. I feel like I have finally achieved some semblance of work-life balance after like two years of being on the edge of burnout. Now Shelby from the Creatorly team has taken on the role of creative operations officer. So she kind of oversees all of those different pieces that I was talking about that was stressing me out. <laughs> and that allows me to have time to work on the areas of my business where I'm most effective. And I really feel like that is business development, marketing strategies, and like long-term goals and vision. And also just like continuing what I love most, which is like keeping up with these marketing trends and strategies and keeping my team informed on them so they can implement them for our clients. I really feel like I'm at a place now where I can truly work on Creatorly instead of in it. 
And that's freed up my mind space to the extent where I feel like I can actually have new ideas and come up with strategies to help us keep growing. Because when I was in the midst of the grind of like helping on client projects, dealing with inquiries, like all of that day-to-day -day stuff, it was completely blocking out any extra energy that I might have for planning for the future, setting goals, making new strategies. And I also feel really grateful that it allows me time to work on that original passion of mine, this YouTube channel that started it all. I truly just love making YouTube videos. So I feel really grateful that I have the time in my week to continue focusing on that. And obviously it's also an important part of generating clients for Creatorly, at least at this stage in the game. Look, here's the thing. This stuff really takes time. When I was doing SEO research for this video, I was looking up like, how I grew a six figure marketing agency. And all of the results are these dudes talking about how they did it in like seven days or something ridiculous. And I just think that's absurd and not like an expectation you should put on yourself. It's taken me like about five years to get to the point in business that I am now. I'm not a million dollar business, I'm far from that, but I'm very satisfied with the stability and the team that I've built. I never went to business school. I've literally never even hired a business coach. I've just like talked to the people in my life who have some knowledge about this stuff and mostly figured it out as I went. And even though there were definitely some major struggles along the way, I am so grateful that I did. If you have any more questions about my business journey, I'd be happy to answer them in the comments. If you want to dive into more of the details of how the revenue of my business breaks down, then you can check out this video that I made about my six income streams, because it's more than just like a traditional agency. Obviously I have this YouTube channel. So check that out if you're curious. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're having adventures and following your dreams and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.